so this is a revision too i will just revise all the organs uh, first you should see the heart when you discuss about the heart you should talk about the borders first so this is the border right border inferior border and the left border and the superior border so right border right atrium inferior border is formed by right ventricle and the left ventricle and the left border is formed by the left ventricle and the left auricle and the superior border is formed by the great vessels and the superior border of the right uh, atrium as well as the upper border of the left atrium so this is about the borders and if you see the surfaces of the heart you should say tell about the sternocostal surface and the diaphragmatic surface if you talk about the sternocostal surface it will include the right auricle right ventricle right left part of the left ventricle only one third okay and then if you see the diaphragmatic surface of the heart most of it formed by the left ventricle and then partly by the right ventricle and this is the apex of the heart it is formed by the left ventricle and the base of the heart it is present here it is you have to show here this area can you see the four pulmonary veins they open this is the heart so this is the base of the heart so next thing is grooves start discussing about the grooves after discussing this you should ask, start discussing about the grooves this between the atria and ventricle this groove is called atrioventricular groove which contains the right coronary artery and the small cardiac vein and this is the groove between the two ventricles that is called interventricular groove it contains the anterior and interventricular artery and the great cardiac vein and then turn it and then show them the third groove which is present posteriorly that is called posterior interventricular groove which contains the posterior interventricular groove which contains the posterior interventricular artery as well as the middle cardiac vein then the last one is the most important groove which is called as coronary sulcus it starts from this place between the atria and the ventricle and it goes back it encircles the entire area so this is coronary sulcus in that where is your coronary sinus is situated this is present in the posterior part of the atrioventricular groove especially between the left atrium and the left ventricle this is the area called coronary sinus is situated this coronary sinus opens into the right atrium so this is the area where coronary sinus is situated all veins middle cardiac vein great cardiac vein small cardiac vein and um, oblique vein of marshall and posterior ventricle posterior vein of the ventricle everything drains into the coronary sinus except vena cardis minima and anterior cardiac veins they too they straight open into the right atrium so right atrium separate video i have uploaded that in that you have to see the rest okay this is the opening of sv superior inferior vena cava this is the opening of superior vena cava so superior vena cava inferior vena cava you should see and then inside that you have the two important structures that is uh, not able to open with one hand okay so you know the fossa valis limbus fossa valis and other structures so then iota when you discuss about the iota you see this hmm. iota starts from the ascending iota and it continues to the ascending iota is present in the middle media sternum arch of iota is present in the superior media sternum and the descending iota where it continues down it is present in the posterior media look at this starts from here and it goes back so it goes to the posterior media sternum superiorly it is related to three major vessels left subclavian left common carotid right brachiocephalic right brachiocephalic will be divided into common carotid and the right subclavian right common carotid right subclavian above that you will be having one vein called brachiocephalic vein if you want you can add that otherwise leave it and then inferiorly the arch of iota is related to the ligamentum arteriosum which is a remnant of uh, obliterated part of ductus arteriosus and then the important nerve winding around it is called left recurrent laryngeal nerve and the third structure is pulmonary trunk one two three three structures inferiorly superiorly three branches anteriorly you have the thymus and posteriorly you have the trachea esophagus and the most important one is thoracic duct and the left side you have the sympathetic chain and phrenic nerve everything left lung and pleura this side right lung and pleura so this is about the arch of the iota right and then in exam we will put a um, probe here between the atrial tubes and the ventricular uh, venous tubes we will put a probe here and we will ask about the sinus this is called transverse sinus read the boundaries of the transverse sinus ligation of the iota takes place uh, we will uh, ligation of the iota we can do it in the transverse sinus so this is area called transverse sinus and then next one is 
the ligament of arteriosum is a very important spot it is a rem obliterated portion of ductus arteriosus and then next one is spleen when you take the spleen you keep the spleen like this because this flat surface for the colon this and posterior end, this is the anterior end and this is the gastric impression, renal impression and colic impression. This is the hilum. When you talk about the hilum, you should talk about two ligaments. One is gastrosplenic ligament and the other one is lenorenal ligament. Gastro, gastro means short gastric arteries and left gastroepiploic arteries are the content and lenorenal ligament you have the contents of tail of the pancreas and splenic vessels. Along with that you will be having the pancreatico splenic lymph nodes and sympathetic plexus. Everything lies in this area. That's why it appears very messy. Okay. And the, how the border is formed is splenic masses they join together and forms the superior border. You can see only one arch in this plane. Okay. You can see only one arch in this area. So this is the superior border. So superior border is formed by uh, the splenic notch is formed by incomplete fusion of the splenic mass. Failure of fusion of the splenic mass leads to accessory spleen. When we discuss about the testis, testis when you discuss that time you should see whether the uh, epididymis, epididymis should be placed posteriorly. Understood? See this is the tunica vaginalis that is nothing but the process is vaginalis so this is the epididymis should be placed posteriorly and the space between the epididymis and the testis is called a sinus of epididymis and this is the spermatic cord you should tell the contents of the spermatic cord number one content is the vas number two content is the artery to the vas number three content is the cremastric muscle artery to the cremastric muscle and fourth is the pampery complexes and fifth is the testicular artery and sixth is the uh, nerves, nerve plexus around that seven is the genitofemoral nerve so these are all the contents so arterial contents venous contents nerves and lymphatics like that you should tell all the contents okay this is very important sinus of epididymis and then next this area this is your uh, lung you see that broad wide open structure that is the pulmonary artery so below the artery you have the bronchus so only one bronchus hypoteral bronchus is there so hypoteral bronchus only one bronchus is there so obviously it is left lung so yeah, again you check it once you have the notch and you have the lingula so they will ask the segments in the lingula okay this is spotter and this is the notch so it is confirmed that it is the left lung so arch of iota and the subclavian and the descending iota and this is the esophagus and trachea esophagus everything is seen here and if you see the right lung compare wide open structure is here that is the pulmonary artery above you have the epiarterial epi means above epiarterial bronchus and hypoarterial bronchus this is the inferior pulmonary vein which is enclosed by the pulmonary ligament what is the role of this pulmonary ligament? It gives, it provides dead space for the enlargement of the vein. This will be asked. How the pulmonary ligament is formed? The mediastinal, mediastinal means the part of parietal pleura. Mediastinal pleura continues as visceral pleura. Visceral pleura which, is cover, which covers the lung. Can you see the shiny thing? That is your visceral pleura. So the, from outside, the mediastinal pleura continues as visceral pleura. That area it is called as pulmonary ligament which encloses the inferior pulmonary vein here nicely the scene the pulmonary ligament understood and then the fissures and other things you can understand easily and here is the bladder bladder uh, sorry uh, gallbladder the liver okay liver so gallbladder will ask if you put a pin over here that is called fundus of the gallbladder body of the gallbladder and this is the neck of the gallbladder then the cystic duct the cystic duct that valve is the valve of haste and then both the cystic duct and the hepatic duct they join together and forms the bile duct so number one and then this is your artery this is your vein portal vein is situated here and then you have the fissures number one fissure for the left uh, ligamentum venosum second two fissures for the ligamentum teres hepatis and the third fossa for the ivc Number 4 is for the fossa for the gallbladder. Number 5 is very important. This is for the porta hepatis. This fissure is for the porta hepatis. So fissure number 1, fissure number 2, fossa number 3, fossa number 4 and the fissure number 5. 
this is for the porta hepatis from the ligamentum innosum fissure to the porta hepatis your lesser omentum is situated so they will ask in the exam then what is lying in this groove so you will tell us ligamentum venosum that is a remnant of the ductus venosus obliterated portion of the ductus venosus what is the peritoneal fold attached here is lesser lesser omentum so this is how you have to answer this is nothing but the ligamentum uh, teres is nothing but the obliterated portion of the left umbilical vein and then this is the lobe called quadrate okay near the gallbladder it is called quadrate and this is called caudate process and this is the caudate lobe and this is process is called as caudate process and this is the porta hepatis porta hepatis anteriorly who is there posteriorly who is there that or not you should tell this side which ligament is there and then next is bare area last part okay so when you see the bare area of the liver boundaries of the bare area bare area it is not covered by the peritoneum superiorly superior layer of the coronary ligament inferiorly inferior layer of the coronary ligament right margin is formed by the right triangular ligament and the left side it is formed by the inferior vena cava this is a very important site for the porto cable anastomosis and this is the posterior always bare area is the posterior surface this is the superior surface and this is the anterior surface and this is the right lateral surface and this is the visceral surface or the inferior surface inferior surface while talking about the visceral lesion you start from the esophagus and the stomach and then here only you should tell the pylorus pylorus above that you have the lesser sac lesser omentum and here you have the first part of the duodenum colon and the kidney renal and this area is for the suprarenal like that it should go this is for the tuber omentale tuber omentale is nothing but the bulge which is present on the body of the pancreas and then front okay this ligament this ligament is a falciform ligament the content of the falciform ligament is para umbilical veins which communicates the left branch of portal vein to the anterior abdominal wall veins very important site of porto cable anastomosis and then it continues down inferiorly as here inferior the ligamentum teres of liver and if you see the bladder see this is how you have to place the kidney the vein should be above and followed by the artery next renal artery and then the ureter so ureter is coming down this is the um, bladder this is the prostate you can see the prostate ureter also and then if you turn inside you have to show them the you can see no nicely the ureter is seen so ureter with the two openings you can see the opening here nicely okay you can see the opening here okay one opening is here and the other opening is here this is the trigone of the bladder urethral opening and ureteric opening this is called bar of mercier you can see clearly right mm. this is the testis epidermis sinus of epidermis is lying in the posterior lateral aspect mm. when you keep the stomach so stomach to be kept first you see the uh, area where this see look at that this is a pil pyloric sphincter area you cannot see anything the how much the sphincteric action is there so pyloric sphincter should be placed down and this should be above okay so this is the fundus upper and cardiac end fundus body and the pyloric end pyloric canal everything so along the lesser curvature right gastric left gastric arteries along the greater curvature great romentum right gastroepiploic and the left gastroepiploic fundus short gastric arteries this is very simple stomach and here is the seminal vesicle can you see the lobulated structure seminal vesicle vas artery to vas is a branch from superior vesicle artery this is the posterior surface of the bladder this is the ureter and this is a pelvis pubic symphysis retropubic space pubic symphysis the secondary cartilaginous joint and retropubic space is the uh, you have the retropubic pad of fat and uh, pubic vesicle pubic prostatic ligaments this is the bladder and this is the prostate from here the 
prostatic urethra starts this is a pre prostatic urethra prostatic urethra and then if you come down this is a membranous urethra and then if you come down this is the bulbar part of the urethra this is the pineal part of the urethra and then this is the bladder this is the uracus so always keep it like this and then next comes the uh, rectum okay this is the anal canal so rectum blood supply is important anal canal blood supply is also very important this is prostate this is bladder and this is the sacrum this is intervertebral disc center one is nucleus pulposus and surrounded by annular fibrosis this is the female pelvis the same pubic symphysis and you see the rectum the sacrum and here just next to that you have the retropubic space and this is the bladder urinary bladder next to the bladder you have the uterus uterus nicely you can see the cervix everything this is the fornix of the uh, cervix and then this is the body of the uterus and this look at the fundus of the uterus and from here the fallopian tubes are going that side okay this is the rectum this is the pouch called recto uterine pouch questions can be asked from anywhere 